people in the room? One line, I was just going to say, still on the topic of EFI and Zen, that I'm trying to push everywhere for OVMF to be the default firmware with CSM support so you can boot anything. No. Well, actually, I'm... <laughs> Strictly speaking, I'm trying to get to the point where I can ask for that with a straight face, and <laughs> that'll do me. Anyone? Well, uh, I don't know how much is this. Uh, this is off topic, but uh, as part of the work we've been doing on NetMap, uh, which is a framework for fast packet IO, we've been also trying to improve the, the network packet in, uh, in QM or KVM. And we have come up with a virtualized, para-virtualized version of E1000 uh, together with a few other modifications. Basically, we get uh, to a million packets per second throughput between hosts uh, using uh, sockets and about five million packets per second between, uh, between guests, sorry, even before it was be between guests on, uh, on the same machine. If uh, you want to have a look at uh, the papers or the technique uh, we use, I can post the URL or you can look up for NetMap uh, and there are links there. Okay. Sorry? So, the, it, it, first of all, it was an experiment. We wanted to see how much, should the, how, how much the performance benefit uh, of Virtual.io was inherent in Virtual.io and uh, how badly, how badly uh, the, the device simulation was. And the, the interesting part, I think, is that uh, it, only, it was necessary to make only a very small modification in the, in the device driver in the, in the guest, and also the backend for the power virtualized part is very simple. It basically mimics the, uh, the, the virtual model. Um, so, and the, the second advantage is that, for instance, uh, over E1000, we already had uh, a net map both for Linux and, and FreeBSD. So once we implemented the power, um, well, not really the power virtualization, but some other, some other technique to reduce the, the number of VM exits, uh, we got uh, immediately the, the performance benefits of, of NetMap. Uh, doing the same on Virtio would require uh, porting uh, uh, NetMap to Virtio, which is a slightly bigger effort. So, so, <laughs> why? why? <laughs> NetMap is a... a hmm, sorry? Virtualization. Uh, so we, we uh, the background is that we have a framework that by, is an OS bypass thing uh, that uh, lets you uh, send and receive packets very very quickly bypassing all the network stack, and this is called NetMap. It's similar to the PDK in, in principle, the same kind of performance. You can do wide speed on uh, on, on the hardware with uh, with it, and we wanted to see what kind of performance we, we could get with this framework on a virtual machine. Right, that makes sense. And this, this framework basically runs on, um, like, as, as the back end for QMU, right? As the network, network transport protocol back the, end the for net QMU. Map, the ne NetMap framework is part uh, of the OS, uh, either in the guest or in the, or in the host. Why, why would it be part of the device? Uh, I, I, so okay, so, so you, you, you have a few layers, right? You have a device simulation path, which basically um, does your queue processing, and then you have um, some networking path which, which in, in QMU, for example, goes through like its, its internal switch and its tap networking, whatever, exactly, to exactly. access, to, mm -hmm. to basically shove packets mm -hmm. into, into the kernel. Um, and you're trying to bypass this whole tap stuff and the virtual switch in QMU and all of that, which makes sense. Mm. I'm just wondering why any of that would be affected by which interface you have in, 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 in I mean, which, whether you're doing Quid IO or, or E1000, it sounds like it should work okay, on, because on, on a layer below. Because on top of E1000, I don't have this uh, fast uh, framework. So I'm, I'm limited by the, the network stack in the, in, the host, in the guest. If you try the network stack in the guest, I don't think you can go above uh, one, two million packets per second, just because uh, it's uh, too heavyweight. If you want to run uh, NetMap in the guest, you need to use uh, the device. Well, not really a power virtualized device, but you need the device driver that supports NetMap. E1000, yeah. Okay, anyway, so the, the issue was the gas. The issue was that your gas driver needs enlightenment for NetMap. 
So you have like a fast path on the guest side. Yes, yes. But uh, the parallel virtualization actually doesn't benefit uh, NetMap at all. It was uh, just a parallel experiment to see uh, how fast the device emulation could, could be done. Yep. So um, this is actually an exceptionally good idea that's been shot down upstream many, many times. Because ideally, you could expose something like an, e an emulated E1000, and then guests could um, enable power virtualizations. And you get the best of both worlds. Legacy guests work. And then you get power virtualized too, but the Linux uh, number of the Linux maintainers kind of completely rejected that because it's not how real hardware works, and you can potentially conflict with real hardware. So without vendors' blessing, it's not a safe thing to do. So it's been it's been a while since I've um, I've looked at how IGB does its queue formats and do, does its queue. But if I remember correctly, you actually have to um, like the 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 um, queue in an IGB um, is you have to trap to actually emulate those writes. You can't just map it into memory, which is basically what the slow path and the VM uh, exits are, right? Sorry, I, I cannot hear what you said. So the, um, it's been a while since I've looked at IGB and, and the, how the queuing works. But if I, remember, if I remember things correctly, you have to trap on every queue write to actually do issue it because they, don't, they don't, do not do a separate kick. Are you sure they do? So you could just map your queue as memory and then have a fast IE1000. But, and you do that, so, yes, the queue is not device memory. The queue is guest memory the that you, memory. That oh, you the write. Is, but the point is R. The point is to the queue. Um, you, have you just point to the ring. Yes. Yeah, because I had a through that code because there was a buffer overflow in that. So, yes, that was very Um, so the, we started from the, the standard uh, E1000 uh, QM or KVM, and uh, we got this kind of performance uh, between uh, 20 and 60,000 packets per second on transmit. On the receive side, uh, if the sender is uh, passing up batches of packets, uh, the performance is much better. But uh, low because of uh, one VM exit per packet plus uh, the interrupt response, etc. So we did a few things to try to, to improve the performance. <coughs> One of these was uh, uh, try to improve the transmit path. Uh, and this uh, idea uh, is called SAN combining, uh, similar to something that VMware did uh, 10 years ago, but for different uh, purposes. So the idea here on the SAN path uh, is that uh, you, you do the transmit. Uh, since uh, you have an interrupt uh, on uh, the completion of, uh, of the packet, um, you postpone further, tr further transmission until you get the interrupt. At that point, you can send the entire batch in, in one shot. And uh, so your send performance becomes uh, much, uh, much higher, especially if you have uh, uh, interrupt moderation uh, in the emulated device, which uh, we recently submitted to QM. You'd, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. Hmm. The, so the, the first packet always goes out immediately. Then uh, the, the other ones are delayed uh, uh, depending on uh, your interrupt moderation delay. Um, so it can be short, large, it's up to you. But uh, so the advantage is, is very, really huge because uh, we went uh, from 60,000 to 300,000 per packets per second, if you. Yes. No, no, I'm not delaying. I'm just saying, uh, typically, when, when you do the transmit, uh, there is an interrupt that is paused on, on completion. And, uh, and so if you delay further transmission until you actually get the interrupt, when you get the interrupt, which is guaranteed to arrive, you can send the entire batch of packets that have been transmitted in the meantime. Yeah. 
Yes, but it depends on how late is the interrupt. Because uh, remember that if you if you uh, if you're taking the um, the VM exit immediately, you're already wasting five ten microseconds just for that. So. Uh, well, so it's not terrible. The interrupt moderation well, delays in the order of 20, right. 50 microseconds, something like that. So, so, so the the way we do this now is that we um, uh, we disable notifications until uh, the I/O thread gets scheduled, which actually does the dispatch. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, that means that we'll send packets as they arrive, um, unless the system starts getting overloaded. So, we tend to have a property where, as we scale up, we do more aggressive batching. And that tends to be a nice trade-off for um, you know, really low um, ping latency mm -hmm. when you're doing a small number of packets, um, but also good throughput when you're doing a large number of packets. Mm -hmm. So the challenge with any new mitigation algorithm is that it's not good enough to just be really good at doing bulk transmit. You, you have to be good at bulk transmit, and you have to be good at low latency. Um, but, but this is actually, if you have a simple transaction, one packet out, and then wait for the response. This is perfect. You're not delaying anything. Unless you do parallel TCR, TCPRR. And then it's not so great. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So. But anyway. Fire virtualization that, that we did. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so, so th this is a modification that we did in the, in the, in the guest. It's only on the guest. You don't need to do anything on the, on the hypervisor. Um, so the next step was to try the full power virtualization of the 1000, basically similar to VTR. You, you have a thread that uh, uh, is started. And the only extension in the device model that we needed was a, a small uh, control block, uh, which is shared between the guest and, uh, and the host thread. And again, performance on the E1000 went up, uh, up to half a million packets per second. And then at the, those rates, uh, basically, we were using VTIO without we asked. So. Okay, so never mind. So, thanks everybody. I think we're at the end of time. So.